guys welcome back to explore electronics plus let us continue our discussion with design and verification of apb memory so in the previous two videos we have already discussed the theory part of apb protocol in that read write transactions with and without wait states and also we have seen the design code of apb memory in part 2 lecture so let us continue our discussion i have made small changes in the design of apb memory this will be more accurate compared to that second part let us recall the apb signals and also the different states the very first thing is apb protocol will be having three states means any apb slave or master will work with three stages the first one is idle phase when the slave is not selected and then when the slave is selected it will move to the setup phase in the setup phase select will be 1 and enable will be zero means whenever p enable is zero it indicating that there is no transaction occur when p enable becomes one then only it it is access phase and the slave is accessible the transaction may occur so these three are the important stages in apb transaction so let us take this as the reference and let us understand the design part of apb memory here the module apb memory will be having all these ports these are corresponds to apb protocol p clock p reset are the inputs similarly we will be having a p select signal this p select signal can be a single bit here since we will be having only one slave and p enable and then p write signal indicating that when p write is equal to 1 that is write transaction when p write is equal to 0 that is read transaction then i have taken 32 bit data signal that is pw data write data signal and phi is to 0 address indicating that address is 6 bits so here the memory which i have taken is having a depth of 32 so for this 4 is to 0 that is 5 bit of address is sufficient to indicate the error if the address coming from the test bench is more than 32 we need to indicate the error with p slave error signal so to indicate that i have taken an extra bit of address so that we can verify if the address is above the range of the memory whether we will get the error or not and then we will be having p ready signal it is indicating that the uh, start of transfer and slave error to indicate the error from the slave and similar to the write data signal of 32 bits here also i have taken 32 bit read data and this is a temporary port which is not necessary for the design which is taken here just for the analysis of output then comes the memory declaration it will uh, take 32 bit value in each and every location of memory so it is having a depth of 32 and then for the different states to move from idle to setup setup to access we need to have three different states over here so i have taken parameter idle is equal to 0 0 setup is 0 1 and access is 1 0 these are the three constants which i am using here and we will be having the two state declarations for the present state as well as for the next state with 1 is to 0 present state and next state and then comes the checking of reset first we need to check for the reset whether it is the state of the apb memory is what when the reset is occurred here the reset signal is active low signal and it is asynchronous reset active low reset in the sense whenever the reset signal is zero the reset of the system will occur when the reset is one the system will behave as per the different control signals we are going to give and it is asynchronous means it is the reset is going to occur irrespective of the clock edge so that's why always at positive edge of clock or when the negative edge of reset comes we need to check for whether p reset signal is 1 or 0 if p reset signal is 0 the present state will be the idle state is, that is the very first state of the apb protocol and the next state is also will be the present state if reset is 0 means when reset is 0 we will be in the idle phase itself and when reset becomes 1 we need to move to the next state so next state becomes my present state and now let us see the state wise logic and how actually the transactions logic will be always at star it is indicating that whenever the input signal of 
this IPB memory changes, this always statement will exercise or it will be executed once. So always at star indicating all the input signals sensitive to the change. So my design is sensitive to change in the select, enable, write or any of those also the states. Now I am taking the present state cases here. Case present state. When it is when it is in idle phase, I am just moving to the next step that is setup phase. I am not checking any other signals. We need to come to the setup phase and check for select first. If select is one, it is indicating that the slave is selected. So then we need to move for the access phase by looking at the enable signal. So if the select signal is not one, it means the slave is not selected. We need to go back to the idle phase. That's why the next phase is idle here. Then comes to the access phase by uh, assuming that P select is equal to one. In the access phase, I am directly straightforwardly I am making P ready is equal to one. It is indicating that my slave is ready. So the slave is ready for accepting the transfer. And then we need to check for whether enable signal is one and what is the state of P write signal. If enable is equal to one and P write is equal to one, then it will enter into the if part. So these statements will be checking for what is the address. So if the address is above the range, the range of address here is zero to 31. If it is more than 31, we need to throw an error to the master that slave is sending error through the P slave error signal. That's why when P address is equal to more than 31, I am checking before the write read transactions and I am sending an error signal. Else, if the address is in the range, then we need to take the PWO data coming from the data signal, write data, and we need to put it into the memory. And I am reading back that memory content again from the same address and taken into temp register just to verify whether the same data which is written over here or not. And by indicating P slave error is equal to zero, it says the transaction is successful. And if the write signal is zero and enable is equal to one, this is a read operation. That's why in the read operation, I am taking the address of that memory and giving back the data. So whatever the data present in the memory location of this address will be given to the PR data that is the read data signal. This is what the write read transaction of my APB memory. And else I am checking if enable is equal to zero. If enable goes zero, what happens? We need to go back to the setup state. You can see over here, if P ready is equal to one still, but enable becomes zero, we need to go back to the setup phase. This is what the design is. This is a simple design, but it is also indicating an error. If it is the address is more than the range, and also it will allow us to write the data into the memory and read back the data from the memory. So now let us see the test bench for this. The test bench is a simple Verilog test bench which I have written, but it is a task based. I have written a write as well as read transfer tasks and then let us do write read transfer. So let us see the test bench line by line. First we will be having a module APB memory TB and I need to declare all my inputs as register over here. These input signal become registers in a TB and these output signals of my APB memory becomes wire. Here I have not taken the temp into consideration. This is not required in the test bench. And then I need to instantiate my APB memory over here. APB memory uh, DUT. All these are just the order of declarations which I am used in the design as it is here. You need to follow the order or you need to map the ports uh, like P clock to the test bench register P clock over here. Otherwise you can use a order method like this. Then comes the clock generation. I am initializing the clock is equal to one and then after 10 time unit P clock will be not off P clock. So because of this always this clock will be continuously generating for every 10 time minutes it will be changing its state. So this is the clock generation. Then I will be having a reset and initialization task. This reset and initialization task will be executed first 
and then I will come to the write transfer as well as to the read transfer. You can see over here, initial begin, I am triggering the reset and initialization task first, then I am calling write read transfer. In the write read transfer, I will be calling the write transfer first and then the read transfer. So let us see the reset and initialization first. In the reset and initialization, after 5 time minutes, I am making reset is equal to 0 and I am giving some delay uh, that at the positive edge of the clock only, we need to come out of the reset. That is the reason I am using at pause edge of clock and here the reset will be making it as 1 and then p select will be 0, enable will be unknown, write is equal to unknown and address is unknown when we are in the reset phase. Then in the write transfer, we need to make the select signal is equal to 1 first and also the write signal is equal to 1 and we need to provide the write data and the address before we are making enable is equal to 1. You can see over here, in this diagram, this is write transfer with no wait states. Here, T0 to T1, it is uh, idle phase and T1 to T2, it is setup phase. Here you can see address is given, write signal is 1 and P select is 1, enable is 0. And the next time that is T2 to T3 next cycle, enable will be 1 and PWO data is also given. P ready will become will come only when enable becomes 1. So that's why before making enable is equal to 1, we need to provide all the necessary control signals. Select should be 1, write is equal to 1 indicating write transfer. I am uh, taken the random uh, write data and also the random address. And after one cycle of delay, I am giving enable signal. Here I am waiting for P ready is equal to 1. When P ready becomes 1, the transaction will continue. In the read transfer, again P select I am making it as 1 and write is equal to 0 indicating the read transfer and in the next cycle I am giving enable is equal to 1. And then I am making enable is equal to 0 and select is equal to 0 after the read transfer. So this dollar strobe is just to display the read data as well as the address. In the read write transfer, I am calling write transfer first and then I am calling the read transfer. So this will complete the write transfer and then it will start the read transfer from the same address. This is what the read write transfer is. So here first I need to call the reset and initialization task and then I need to call the read write task. So that is read write transfer task. This is my simple test bench. Now let us run this code. Here in the read write transfer you can see I have used repeat one. It means it will generate only one set of write read transactions. So at 5 nanoseconds you can see reset is zero and we are coming out of the reset after 20 nanoseconds. That is at the positive, positive edge of the clock. And now the slave is selected. P select is equal to one here. And you can see the address is given. That is address is one and the write signal is 1 indicating the write transfer and PWO data is also generated. This is the random data, data generated. This will be called as setup phase. In the next cycle, we are making enable is equal to 1. When enable is equal to 1, this is the access phase. Because of write is equal to 1 and we are getting the ready signal is 1 here, we are transferring the data. This data will be written into the memory over here, which I am reading back from the temp register. You can see the same data is written. So, and slave error is 0 here. SLV error 0 indicating that this transfer is successful. And then the next cycle is read transfer. That's why I am making enable is equal to 0 and providing the write signal as 0. This is indicating that a read transfer. And also at that time, select should be 1. Select is already 1 here. And enable is 0. And at this time, we need to also provide the address but address is same, it is 1. And in the next cycle, you can see when enable becomes 1, this is the read transfer. The data which we have written into the memory is 30337948, which is written back from the memory from the same address, that is address 1. So let us generate some two more transactions. Let me give it as repeat 3, so that we need to get three write read transfers. Let me run it again. So we will get the three transactions back to back. First it will write to the same memory and then it will read back. Again write to the next location and read back. 
Now I can again let us analyze. This is address one, and this is the data. And here my enable signal is one. This data is written. Then comes the read transaction. Again enable is zero. When enable becomes one, it is read back. The same data over here. You can see this is read back. And then comes here the second transaction with the enable signal is zero. Select is one, and address is given as thirty five. You can see here in my design code, the range of the memory is thirty two, and the address should be corresponds to that. But here, because of the extra bit which I am taken here as six bit address, it is generated as randomly as thirty five. There is no thirty five address in my memory. This is out of range. That's why it is when enable becomes one when the transfer starts. Slave is sending an error signal indicating that it is an error transaction. Slave error, p slave error becomes one. So you can see the read data, write data which is given from the test bench. Anyhow, this is not consumed by the slave. That's why when we read back from the location thirty five, we are trying to read, we are getting x means unknown. N A N indicating that is unknown. You can change the radix to hex here. You can see this is x x x means we have not written this to the memory correctly. Then in the next cycle, this is the address which is given zero D, enable is equal to zero, select is equal to one, indicating this is setup phase. In the access phase, you can see the data seven B zero D is written, and when we are reading back from the same address zero D, we are getting the correct data which we have written, and we are getting back from the PR data. So the next thing is that. So if you consider with wait states, the thing is, if P ready is not over, not one over here, the same data should be carry forward and enable uh, signal should be extended. Let us see that. You can see now, here we will be having select is equal to one, and here the enable signal is one. But P ready is zero throughout the cycle. In this cycle, in this cycle, P ready will be zero. In this case, it will be called as a wait transfer with wait state. So this transfer will continue. It is, it will be waiting for P ready to go one. You can see from this cycle to this cycle, P ready is equal to one. Then only the transfer get completed. It will be taking one more clock cycle over here to complete the transaction because of P ready is equal to Zero. It is waiting for P ready to go high. After P ready go high, then only we will be getting the same data in the writing into the memory. So this is what the wait transfer is. These are the different test cases which I have taken here for verification. So here we have verified back to back transactions, write read transactions, and also we have seen single write read transaction, and also we have seen the slave error when there is a beyond address is given. and also we have seen the weighted transfer when the p ready signal is low so in the next video let us see the uvm test bench for the apb memory and let us try to understand the different test cases and let us verify these functionalities using uvm thank you